Hi, everybody. Welcome to another prophetic chat. I am so excited as always. You hear me say that all the time because I clearly am very excited about chats like this. Um, I am really expectant for what God is going to do uh, tonight. Well, we're recording tonight. Um, so I am wanting to say to you, hold on to your hat because it's going to be a really rich time. And uh, I really feel like the spirit of God is going to really be ministering to you tonight as we share together. So as you guys are probably uh, seeing on the screen right now, I'm sure you have seen at least three familiar faces so <laughs> far <laughs> um, but I am so excited to have Matt and his beautiful wife Trish with us tonight thanks guys for joining us how fun is this going to be thank you this could be awesome <laughs> it's going to be fun and you all know this is my awesome husband Kev we've been wanting to do something um together for quite a while and uh, a couple of weeks ago I was just chatting back and forth with Matt and I'm like oh yeah we should do something together uh, the four of us so we are recording now while children are asleep hallelujah yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah we're just really looking forward to what God is going to do so Guys, just for like anyone out there that may not know your story I know that a lot of people are familiar with uh, with you, Matt, and uh, your ministry and what you guys have been doing and have been so blessed by it. But how about give us a little rundown from both of you? Who's Matt and Trish? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lana, and thanks, Kev. It's so cool to be doing this with you guys. Mm -hmm. And so, yep, so we're Matt and Trish. And uh, as most people who know have been watching would know that we've been married for 30 years mm. uh, so Trish is from Texas and uh, she came over here all the way back in 1989 and to work in youth ministry at the church I was uh, in a, I was in youth leadership then and we got on really really well and so, really 30, well. <laughs> <laughs> so 30, 30 years later three adult children and um, yeah it's just it's just a joy to be doing life together so for me yeah i'm senior leader of a church at haberfield baptist church and uh, we do a whole bunch of stuff with hearing the voice of god and mm. prophetic mentoring and we just have a lot of fun doing that so that's kind of me yep and i'm a professional counselor and i love horses <laughs> and so i'm putting those together and i'm studying right. equine assisted psychotherapy to mm. use the outside of a horse to help the inside of a human so, um and I love doing that, but I really love um, helping people to find hope and freedom. Mm. And um, that's, it's really who I am. It's who I was created to be. So I love doing it and I just love people. Yeah. And you guys love people very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can say that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. That's Thank really you. good. Well, shall we dive in? We shall dive in. Yeah. Well, how about we start with you guys? Let's just, yeah. as we always do, let's just chat and see what the Holy Spirit does. But what's been stirring on your hearts lately? What's the Spirit of God been saying? Yeah, well, it's such a interesting time, isn't it, Lana? And I guess in your world and my world and all of our worlds, things are changing very quickly in all different kinds of concepts. But for us, uh, with the with Pentecost upon us, it's such an interesting time. And I've found that even people who don't uh, aren't locked into dates or haven't worried about Pentecost before or mm -hmm. thoughts like that, people are talking about it. Mm. And I think when people are talking about something, whether they value the date or they don't, yeah. um, believing that the Father's voice is in us, if people are speaking about mm -hmm. it, the Father's in it. Mm -hmm. And so there's a real expectancy in my soul and spirit uh, for this season that we're in. Mm -hmm. And even as we move past mm -hmm. and through this time, of Pentecost, I really believe that as the church, the bride of Christ is drawn together in one heart. Mm. Uh, I am so super expectant for what the, the, the king is going to be doing through this season and through this time. And so, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff brewing for us uh, as well. And like here in Australia, we've just had the most 
interesting start to a year, which gives to me that real statement of expectancy in my heart. So we've gone from uh, worst drought in living or in yeah. memory yeah. Uh, to yeah. the worst bushfires, and then we flooded, and yeah. all of a sudden uh, the land started regrowing. Mm. And then we had this epidemic of COVID-19, and we went into a sea la mm. moment. Yeah. And all around the globe, we're watching the globe regenerate. Mm. And so I can't even say that without the sense of the Holy Spirit on it because I just know that creation is aligning with mm. what um, the Father has designed and, and, and planned. Mm. And I just think that we're in a season now for yeah. such a significant uh, manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, totally agree with all of that. Mm. Um, but I think... In this this lockdown time, um, it's a, a bit of a sila, but in between the sila is travailing, mm. and there is birth pains. Yeah. And it really feels like this Pentecost time is a time of something is being birthed, mm. and that something feels like it's um, it's the Holy Spirit being revealed within each one of us yeah. we all know we've got him and yeah. people like to pretend they have manifestations of him mm. but the power that is who he is mm. is revealing himself at the moment yeah. and i think we're going to be seeing things that we have never expected and i think there that there is such expectancy on this moment mm. um, because of He's just telling us, you need to be expecting. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what's coming. Yeah. 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 So be expecting. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. So, and I think like even with Pentecost coming back, like from the festival of weeks. Mm. Yeah. 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 So with it beginning with the early harvest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like, this is a time of early harvest it feels like we're entering in, mm. into the harvest and this is that early time yeah. but it's it's like the birthing of the harvest Amen. so that as we go through it will be more and more revealed and i think the holy spirit is wanting to show us more about this than mm. than we could have imagined mm. yeah i agree and it's so cool you said that because um I'm releasing a video on Pentecost Sunday and part of the word God gave me was I saw what looked like an upper room and it suddenly changed to a labor room, like a birthing suite. Mm. And the Lord mm. said to me, I, this is a moment of birthing. And that's like, I felt that especially today. I was like, wow, I can feel the weight of it even more. You know, that's mm. yeah. So Amen. yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good, Lana, because a lot of, because a lot of the stuff we're doing in dreams right now, and we're getting dreams from all over the world of pregnancy, wow. pregnancy after pregnancy after pregnancy. Wow. And again, yeah. it's when you see these things happen in such profound ways, you just go, okay, it's either a really bizarre coincidence yeah. or <laughs> yeah. the Holy Spirit's talking and, and speaking to us uh, through yeah. so many different ways. That's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So good. I think what what I keep coming back to is in the in the days before Pentecost, Jesus told the ter the um, the disciples, the apostles to tarry to to wait around to basically stay in situ, and that's exactly what we've been looking at over the last uh, few weeks, months. We've been tarrying, and yeah. what the one that the one thing that I've been that's been mulling over in my spirit is just the concept of a silent test you know the, we've been given this opportunity to be in his presence mm -hmm. and even for those whose lives haven't quietened down any there's still an opportunity in the spirit i've um i've had so many people emailing in recently saying this and i've known it too that the the it's like the veil is way for thin right now mm -hmm. If there's mm. ever a time to approach the throne, it's right now. Mm. There's, you know, there's the promise of God mm. in his faithfulness is just as true today as it is at any other day. 
And this is as good a time as any to reposition yourself before his throne, mm -hmm. to cast your ear upon him and expect him to answer. And when I say answer, um, when if if there, there's a there's a proverb, and I, this is a complete tangent, but there's a proverb: if you if you're going to feast at the king's table, hold a, hold a knife to your own to your own throat, mm -hmm. and that is when you're going to inquire of the king, make sure it's a good inquiry. You know, don't don't just ask for lotto numbers. But, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Uh, seek the Lord for the for the secrets of the universe, but mm. seek the, seek the Lord for what's going on in your life and what what you can best partner with, mm. what He's doing around you that you can partner with Him. You're always it's always going to be the best prayer you can pray is when you're praying the same thing that God's praying. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. So seek the Lord and expect mm. Him to answer because when you ask Him the questions that He's that He's asking Himself, then the answer will come. Yeah, you know, make it can come. In that moment, it can come later that day. It can come in the week, and it can it can come through an audible voice. It can come through, you know, the still clear whisper. It could come through pictures, or it can. God will speak, and He will generally speak in the way that we have faith to hear. Yeah. But also, I think too, you know, the the concept of a silent test, um, and also the concept of manifestations of the Spirit. What we see, and there's. There's, this has been a testing time for many, and it's not just a testing time as in, you know, this this is, you know, God's watching us and watching what we do, but a testing time as in, you know, this is a this is a stressful situation. Yeah. Have you noticed things come up that need to be dealt with? And mm -hmm. have you just swept them under the rug of God's grace? Because God's grace doesn't really work that way. You know, God's grace mm -hmm. is there. It's the potential for us to step into freedom. God's mm -hmm. grace is the goodness of God that leads into a, into repentance. That's yeah. grace. Mm -hmm. And God's grace enables us to live Christ-like. We are Christ-like beings that we are supposed to be living in the new creation, not uh, still walking in the old ways. And yeah. I think I think these are these are all things that God's been talking about. Just you know, if you're given the opportunity, where where there's um, where there's opportunity, there's also responsibility. Yeah. You look at the parable of the talents. You know, he gave them all an opportunity. That opportunity was tied to a responsibility. Yeah. And uh, what what we're doing in this season, I think, is going to be the platform and the foundation of what we step into and beyond. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And I think you two have modelled that very, very well. Uh, also, again, when I watch you to in ministry, when I watch you to in life, when I watch you to in relationship and friendship, there's a real sense of the boldness that's on both of your lives to listen and then act. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I know, Lana, we've spoken about this before, but the, the yeah. purity that you guys carry uh, is yeah. part of what draws people to the kingdom because the way that you speak is words of life. And it's, it's just beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. That means a lot. Thank yeah, you. That's really precious. Hmm. Um, I just want to touch on, was it you that said about the wafer thin? Yeah. Yeah, that was you. Okay. Yeah, I've um, I've had a lot of dreams lately and um, quite a lot of encounters where the Lord's been highlighting vision. And, um, you know, I've had dreams of people losing their glasses and having to find their glasses or forgetting their glasses and all these themes about sight. And, um, and I was really um, sitting with the Lord and I was like, okay, God, what are you saying? And he's like, Lana, he's like, right now, he's like the revelation he said that I'm releasing, he said, is, is at a level that it hasn't been before. He said, and it's like, and we've been saying so much, haven't we? Like, you know, God, mm -hmm. his eyes to see, you know, mm -hmm. that we can see as you see, we can hear what you what the spirit is saying. But I think right now, like, um, and especially like in Pentecost and, and coming out of Pentecost, I think, you know, we have to be in that position of God, you know, I, I want to see in the way that that you are seeing and I want to position myself with that divine sight because I think I just have this stirring that there's a real um, invitation to access um, the blueprint and wisdom of God. Um, mm -hmm. And I know, Matt, you and I have talked about this, especially like coming out of this kind of sailor moment and what is that going to look like and how are we going to, um, you know, we can't go back to what, just assume and go back to what was, but actually build yeah. God in, in the way that he's building. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the Lord's really going to be restoring sight to people. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that um, have been experiencing a lot of confusion 
and a lot of like lack of clarity and you know and I just I've even at the moment like today I've had this really strong burden for people that um, have almost lost their confidence in what God has already said to them you know and uh, and I think you know there's going to be such a a um, an encounter with the Lord like I feel the father's heart where he wants to restore confidence in people regarding what God is saying to them so I'm not um, yes, I have healthy accountability, but I'm not depending on the yes of somebody else before I act on the word of God. And that kind of ties in with, you know, I just, yeah, I could go on. But I think that, yeah, God's really um, not only going to restore sight and increase sight, but couple it with boldness. I think there's mm. really a cry for the church to arise in boldness like never before and to be voices of justice and truth and not be, you know, moving in fear of man. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And also, okay. you know, okay. sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry, yeah, I just want to say, partner on to that. Justice and judgment does not look like bitterness, anger, and wrath. Bitterness, right. anger, and wrath, dissension, right. acts of jealousy, they're all lusts of the flesh. And look, you know, we, we get, we've, we've seen words of correction, and we've seen words of correction, mm. but... You know, the words of correction that come out of love have the power of God behind them. They, mm. you know, God doesn't correct by killing you with a sledgehammer. He no. corrects by, um, you know, circumcising your heart. He mm. corrects by trimming mm. away the fat and giving you the God the way forward. Um, you know, words of death are not words of correction. And we as a church need to uh, need to stand away from the bitter judgments and step into the righteous just uh, righteous justice yep because justice carries life justice carries freedom and not death I'm sorry yeah I'm yeah careful. Uh, that's and I, I just want to affirm what you've just said kevin because again so often the christian church rises itself up to say that this is god's judgment upon our land this is god's judgment mm -hmm. and again it was so quick to, to jump into that concept of what God's judging mm. and at times we're so slow to jump into what God's loving. Yeah. And um, I think they're, they're, those places are poles apart. Mm. And again, when we talk about the new wine, we talk about the new season, mm. uh, I think it's up to the body of Christ now, the bride of Christ to actually define those things and mm. not just keep them in places of brilliant metaphor as well and so again when people go well what is this new wine that you're talking about or what is this new era that we're moving into uh, then we we need to start using some of the words like you've just uh, spoken out kev and, and lana uh, about love uh, mm. and again that's a no-brainer for me i'm always going to take the conversation back to that yeah. but uh, <laughs> awesome. but it's this thing that the new wine the new wine in uh, the old testament always speaks of god's provision Mm. another season has been brought in yes. and so if we're declaring that this is the new wine we're actually saying the season has now been brought in and now we're living from this place of the new wine we have new wine skins we're holding it in new hearts and new hands mm. and it's moving into that place now rather than going back to where we were but understanding mm. what we've got and so again to make that tangible for people like this time of COVID-19 for so and leading a church, you kind of get to see this at a broad spectrum, mm. but relationships are thriving. Mm. Like people yeah. are connecting yeah. and heart connections. This is not just catching up to say, Hey, how's the, how's it going? This yeah. is how are you going? Yeah. And we're watching relationships thrive. We're watching community. Uh, build and grow and if this is not a move of the holy spirit yeah. then i don't know what a move of the holy spirit is because it's a binding together it's a restoration it's a renewal it's yeah. a strengthening it's it, it's just so powerful and again if we go back to doing things the same way as we used to it's yeah. like we give away the ground in relationship that the father's yeah. just been going i'm a good father here's a good gift yeah. I'm raising up people around you, these loving voices around you. And it's like he, he's given us that emphasis and that uh, momentum yeah. as we move in and through this time as well. Mm. So good. Yeah, that's really good. I um, I just, while you were talking then, Matt, I just had a, a vision and I saw people um, in caves and they were, there was a word over the cave and it said loneliness. 
And yes, the Lord was preparing them in the hidden place, but there was this place of an ache in, in their hearts of like, you know what, I've been really lonely. And as you were speaking, I just really felt like the Father wanted to encourage people that he is bringing um mm-hmm a deeper place of connection to these people. Like it's time to come out of those caves and to really find um, what's the word that I saw? Kindred, like Joy. like people that are like kindred, not just an acquaintance, but oh, kindred Sorry. people. <laughs> I'll just go for a spin on my chair. <laughs> um, and it, it reminds me of this scripture and then I'm going to hand over to you guys. But um, the Lord spoke to me about Pentecost and he spoke to me about um, Acts 4, what was it? Uh, Acts 4.31, um, and then I went, I, I did the word on it. Then I went to Acts 4.32, uh, where am I? Hang on, sorry, lost my page. And it said, all the believers were in one mind and heart. Mm. And I just like, I was like, oh, I love that. And I kept reading. And then I got to verse uh, chapter 5, verse 13. And in the Passion Translation, it says, and the believers were wonderfully united as they met regularly in the temple courts in the area known as Solomon's Port. And I thought, wow, like what a beautiful picture, like wonderfully united and of Mm. one heart, you know, like, and I think you started off with that, Matt. I think you mentioned those words as we Mm. started this chat. Um, Mm. But I just, yeah, I just really felt like when you were talking, just to really encourage those of you that you may have felt lonely and the season's been long and you know you've been in this beautiful place with the Lord but you've been crying out for um can I say your tribe I Mm. want to encourage you um that the Lord is bringing people to you and they are they are the people of one heart that Mm. kindredness um because you're not meant to walk this journey alone and uh, and the Lord really wants to comfort your hearts right now so yeah beautiful yeah yeah that's awesome (laughs) Um, I've just, it's just been sitting with me that, um, you know, when, when Jesus spoke about, um, about sending the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and what he wants, wanted the Holy Spirit to be able to do for us. And then with the Pentecost, the Spirit came and came on everybody. Mm-hmm. every person every voice was important yeah and there's not a single person that was left out mm. well, as far as we can see there yep yeah I think. um but so people who are feeling loneliness mm. um in this time for everybody anxiety and stress has gone up to here yeah mm-hmm. so everybody is up here and for some people that's normal for them so finally the world feels a little peaceful Mm. um but for a lot of people it's it's a lot and trying to face things that come up Mm. it's been difficult Mm. trying to do that online has been difficult and um i think in the original pentecost when the holy spirit came Mm. and how he came on everybody and how important that was yeah. Uh, I think this is a time again where he is coming on everyone and yep. the loneliness that's being felt is to be taken, is not to be wasted, mm. Yeah, is to, to be held. Um, why mm. are we feeling lonely? Mm. Why are we feeling anxious? Why are we feeling separate? Mm. And taking those things and letting the Lord speak into those moments yeah. as to what part of him can fill those places yes. mm. because yes, we're not meant to be alone, but we are meant to be whole with him. That's yeah. awesome. So good. We do not need another person to make us whole. There is no, you complete me. I'm sorry. Mm. Only Jesus does that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> there's, there's something like that. There's the, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> it's taking me for a spin. <laughs> The, on the notion of empowerment, um, in in this in this realm, I mean, when you look at anxiety and you look at depression, and the, I think um, in in the people that I've spoken to with this, in my own experiences of this too, um, generally it comes with a in partnership with disempowerment, and I think that's why you know that's why it can be such an underlying um, 
problem is we live in a disempowered society where you know where everything has become so minute quick that we rely on everything else we rely on microwaves we rely on cars we rely on the handyman to come and fix the fridge we or we we just buy a new fridge there as a society we're so disempowered mm-hmm. you know we we rely on our mobile phones and we do on our own levels of communication um and I think that, that is also, you know, that that is also the contrast with Pentecost as well, because what came was empowerment. It was the dynamic power of God that came uh, came upon people, and that dynamic is that this is the word that we get dynamite from. This was empowerment. Yep. This is empowerment, and not just empowerment to speak in funny voices or empowerment to you know to live life in a better way. This is empowerment to live transcendently in, you know, to, you, you look at, you look at how, when they wanted people to serve tables, they looked, they found the most empowered people to serve those tables. Why? Because, you know, that's even the most menial act on earth can be blessed and empowered by God. And there's nothing that you can't do that under his power that will not be blessed, touched, enriched, and overflowing with not ha- just His grace, but His miraculous power. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and the thing was, it wasn't just the power to speak in other languages or to have fire sit on your head. It was the power of the living God, yeah. alive and present in the here, in the now, in the moment. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And, that's what we have now. That's what we have had since then. And yeah. it is time for us to live in that again. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. Today I was sitting with the Lord and I was writing out this word that I posted and I, um, I haven't got it in front of me, but the last line that the Lord spoke just hit me so strong. Actually, I might get it up just because uh, my paraphrase, I'll probably muck it all up. But um and it was just so communicated his power. He said, um, well, I heard him say this, but I wrote he. He's coming to interrupt, disrupt, and erupt within mm. his church. Mm. And I just, and it was that that feeling, that sense of explosive. Like, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm just going to like pop up over here. Like you think of the word eruption, like that's a pretty, like, you mm. know, that that's not a, a soft feather word. Like that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of got me on this train of thought of like, wow, like do we even have a grid for the power of God? You know what I mean? Like we've seen it manifest in our lives in different ways, but I just feel this almost joy of the Lord of like, you just, you haven't seen anything yet, you know, yeah. like for what I'm about to do um, and I'm going to erupt. And I just, I thought it was interesting that he used words like disrupt and interrupt because mm-hmm. sometimes those things aren't convenient, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> If somebody interrupts me sometimes if I'm doing something, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, again, it just brought back that whole thing that I'm always on about, just mm. being sensitive to him, tenderhearted. Yeah. yeah. So go, Matt, yeah. and see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the concept of the divine interruption, Lana, which you and I have talked about before, mm-hmm. again, like you say, nobody enjoys being interrupted when you're doing something, mm-hmm. but that's part of our culture. And yeah. I wonder what it would be like if we gave more permission for the Father just to interrupt us with grace, yeah, oh. just to change our perspective. Yeah. And that's where, like the day of Pentecost, there was a massive interruption yeah. uh, to all different kinds of mm. community, of culture. Yeah. And like Trish said, like every one of them had a voice. Yeah. And I think at times in the churches we are so concerned about people's voices and what they're going to say and if they're going to say something weird yep. that we shut down the very voices that the Holy Spirit is saying, I need the church mm-hmm. to hear this. Yeah. I need the church to hear it. And so for us, like we've been hearing that word permission, yeah. I'm giving you permission to speak. I'm yeah. giving you permission to hear. Mm-hmm. And it's again, it's these things that then flow from us. And like the word mm-hmm. erupt and the overflow or the ever flowing river, mm-hmm. uh, the water of life, mm-hmm. all of these things are designed. Or even, you know, when Jesus said, I'm going to press down, shake together, make room for more, but you're still going to overflow. Yeah. It literally means it's going to get messy. 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's like funny. Yeah. But nobody overpours a glass of wine. Yeah. Like that, that's rude. Yeah. But, uh, mm. but Jesus is like, doesn't seem to bother me. Yeah. And we're actually going to have some fun with this thing. Come and it's on. again, when church has that element of joy, and even mm. if I can dare to say fun in some of it, um, I know some people won't enjoy that phrase, but I just think that this is a season and time for the father. He's a good dad. Yeah. He's giving good gifts to his kids. And some of those gifts are the gold that he's placed in people's uh, voices, in yeah. their hearts. Yeah. And if we just take the time to listen, mm. uh, we will be so surprised at the revelation that flows into the body of Christ. And it won't just wait on one person or, or one, one person, yeah. a, a pastor or, or a prophet to speak it. It'll be the church is just yeah. flowing with the words of life and the, yeah, yeah. anyway, getting carried away. No, but I just really sense that this is that season, right? Yeah. And, and in all of those words, interrupt, disrupt, um, the, and then, of course, the outpouring, all of those words, though, have rupt, rupture. And what happens when a bag ruptures? There is the outpouring. Yeah. And yeah. When, when the bag is full, when the when the wineskin gets overflowing, it then pours out, it ruptures, and then it mm. uh, erupts on everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting. You said the word mess or messy because mm. the Lord said to me today, um, I could hear him speaking to me and to the church, and he's like, to you, it might look messy. To me, it's divine order. And I was like, mm. oh, wow, just this place of like just blowing my mind again of how how we see things, you know, mm. and how we kind of might, you know, box things and it has to look like this or, you know, mm. all right, just let this group of people speak or whatever it looks like, you know, because if we can't get too messy. Yeah. Well, hang on a sec. Like, when God moves, it may to us look like messy, but he's not a God of chaos and he's not a God that's out of order. What yeah. he does, there's divine order in it. So it started me on this kind of deeper like conversation with the Lord of, wow, like what if the power of God manifesting in our midst mm -hmm. looks really messy? <laughs> you know, yeah. are we willing to allow that knowing that it's, divine order like mm. it's his order like yep. oh, yeah yeah and i think we need to answer that question immediately lana mm. in the affirmation it's it's again you know how sometimes we leave questions out there hanging just to see what's going to happen I, I think the father's like are, are you in yeah mm. and if that's a yes yep then let it flow yeah and if that looks a little awkward or a, yeah. um you know how David says, I'm willing to be even more undignified than this. Yeah. Um, I just think there's such weight on those words. Yeah, I do too. And you, okay. I was just going to say just one thing. Yeah. You know, um, the story of um, when Bill Johnson was seeking the Lord, he's crying out for more all the time, Lord, I, I just mm. have to have more of you. And what happens? The Lord meets him in in the night for like many nights and what and he has this vision of himself walking down the street with his arms flailing everywhere and he can't control his limbs because of the power of the spirit and basically the lord says to him do you still want me like will you still like this is the price are you yeah. willing to look like look silly <laughs> yeah. and you can have me and yeah. it broke him and he wept in his bed and he said i'll, I'll have you if, if that's what mm. it like if i look silly if it looks like yeah. doesn't matter if I get you in return, like yeah. wow. Yeah. I, th I think too we we confuse divine order and human order. I mean, we True. when the, the world before creation was chaotic, which means there was nothing. Every, there was mm -hmm. atoms, particles, whatever they were flying in whatever direction. Then God came and He brought order and He He brought creation. Mm -hmm. But I somehow doubt. I mean, I, I certainly don't see it when I look outside today that when he created forests that he had those trees lined up in a row. <laughs> it's It just doesn't work like that. Creation has chaos built into it because yeah. in in create you can't be entirely creative and mm. have all your trees lined up in a row. That it, There's no beauty in that. Yeah. God, God's version of order is very much different from our version of order mm. and i'm not saying that it looks completely chaotic there's, there's always a beauty to it and that's the thing it's there's always a beauty to it mm. it's not you know it's not disorder for the sake of disorder it's not disruption for the sake of disruption mm. it's 
it's disruption, in, but it's got the beauty and the love that uh, yeah. that all is it. It's, it's that, that's what's that's what binds it all together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's the order in the word. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Yeah, then we, we always have to find the order in the word too, you know. Mm. We talk about disorder, we talk about chaos, but it, it will always be in the word. It will, it will never contradict what it says in the word. Mm. Yeah. Yep, so good. Yeah, true. Yeah. So yeah. I was just noticing in, in Acts 2, because um, we were talking about overflowing and being messy, and but overflow doesn't start at the top. Yeah. Yeah, overflow, but it's got to get there. It's like the water flows into the lowest places first mm. and it fills from there. Say so like getting back to people experiencing loneliness and the heart, the travailing that's been going on, mm. the water of life is just flowing in. The Holy Spirit filled them at Pentecost. It's yeah. filling us now from those lowest places mm. up to overflow and messy. Yeah. And in those places, it's allowing him to bring peace, mm -hmm. allowing him to bring safety. Mm -hmm. In those places where we've been hurt or traumatized or in pain, mm -hmm. um, dealing with the hard stuff of life mm -hmm. and just allowing him to come into those places, which sounds really lovely and cute for me to say right now, and it's hard work. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but he is faithful. Mm -hmm. He is very faithful. And just... I'm really thankful that he comes into those deep places to fill us up to before we get messy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I really feel like when you were saying that, Trish, um, just to really th to speak to somebody, maybe one of you, maybe a group of you, but um, I really feel like you've been crying out to the Lord for healing, um, for mm -hmm. some stuff that's come up. But there's this thought in your head that keeps coming to you that says this is going to be a very long, drawn out process. Um, now, healing can take time. But I really believe that for some of you right now that have been asking the Lord that question, God, is it going to take forever? I saw as Trish was speaking that um, you are going to have an encounter with the Lord where he's going to speak his truth into your heart and into your soul and there will be a sudden healing there will be a sudden deliverance that's going to take place um, you know I say it all the time one word out of his mouth changes everything mm. how can you be in his presence and not be changed but I just I really feel the father's heart for some of you that are in that place right now where you've just felt mm. so discouraged like God mm. it's going to take forever and the Lord wants to really just comfort you right now that keep seeking him because it's one word of truth that's coming and suddenly you'll come into wholeness. That's awesome. So, and yeah. I and I have a have a similar word from a different perspective too. That there are people out there who have, who are looking at areas of their life that need healing, but they're afraid to take that first step. They're mm. afraid because it, it may be a long and arduous process. But the word is it's worth it. It's yeah. worth it. Yes, that path is long, but along that along that long path, there's gems that you're going to pick up, and those gems, each one of those gems, are worth it. And then at the end of that path, you're going to be not only walking in freedom, but you're going to have a massive swag of gems that you can then hand out to others. You will be the the catalyst in not just uh, the healing in your own life, but you'll be the catalyst in the healing of others' lives. So if you as you show them these gems, as you give away these gems. This, these gems will be the, the catalyst in their lives that leads them onto that same journey as well. But I just want to say it's mm. worth it. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If I can just mm. jump on the back of that, Kev, because that's such a great word. As Lana, you were speaking, I was thinking of Elijah in that cave mm. and God told him to go back. Yeah, yeah. And to go back mm. meant to walk into that place where fear mm. drove him out. And there's such a, a time where we allow that fear to control our lives mm. um, and to prevent us from being where the Father's called us to be. Now, to go back meant to be in a community of 7,000 other people who had yet to bow the knee yeah. to Baal. And again, it's to go back in the community. And as mm. Kev, you're talking about gems that the people are picking up along the road. Those gems to me are things like the healing, the restoration, mm -hmm. the authority that you gain in those moments, the experiences yeah. that you have to say, I know what you're going through right now. Yeah. I felt what you're going through right now. Mm -hmm. Each 
each one of those phrases is literally a gem for a person who's going through that. Yeah. And so when someone's going through anxiety, the last thing they need is for someone to go, just get over it. Yeah. That's yeah. not a gem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably the utter opposite. Yeah. Um, but a gem is, can I sit with you? I know what this feels like. Yeah. And just that presence beside a person, it's like love is measured by presence. And when you bring that your presence, the love that you have and flow to that person, lives change mm. through that presence. Mm. And again, it's this thing that happens in community. And I just I have this real sense that, some, like you say, some people are finding themselves in caves mm. and all alone and it's dark mm. there. And like it's like Elijah, man, that there was an earthquake, there was fire, there was wind. There was no reason you'd want to come out of that cave yeah. and except for the voice of God. Mm. And I, I just think that this is a season uh, uh, and it's been leading up to this time where God's voice is being heard on repeat. Mm. It's like Jesus didn't do anything without first hearing it from the Father or seeing it from the Father. And I think those two things are on the bride of Christ right now. Mm. We will be able to hear. We will be able to see. Therefore, yeah. Uh, and all of us. I don't mean just the, mm. the the famous ones or the leaders of churches or pastors. I mean mm. everyone. And I think we would be so surprised at the things that our kids are seeing and hearing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. If we took the time mm. to listen, and Lana, you and I have spoken about this before, you know, the way that your kids just drop a word in and they don't have a filter on whether that's a good word or that's a tough word. Yeah. They just drop a word in. You go, yeah. <laughs> That hurts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, it's such a credit to you too, just the way that you value uh, their voices. I just can't mm. encourage you guys enough with that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think we've talked about this, Matt, before, but I really think, you know, in this new era that we're in, we're going to see the voice of the Lord come through the children more than we ever have. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. And, And that's going to challenge some, you know, religious mindsets and it it may ruffle some feathers. But I think that, yeah, the Lord is wanting to empower the church in that reality. Like John 10, 27 doesn't say my selected few sheep hear my voice. They know me and they follow me. (laughs) Or the ones with the most Facebook followers, right? Like Mm. it's no, no, no. My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. Um, And yeah, and I think that there's just such an awakening that's taking place to um, in people's lives. And I go back to what I said before, like just this concreting that I feel like the father wants to bring to people in the confidence that, no, I can hear from God, you yep. know, and like, and I hear from the Lord. And this is the message that God has given me because I just, I keep feeling this tonight that there are, there's like muzzles on people's mouths, like that they've really, their voice has been stolen, whether somebody has said, it's not right or it's the voices in their own like heart that have kind of gone, you know, you're wrong. Yeah. Um, I just think that there is, um, I want to call it like life messages, like the deposit, you know, we all have a theme that God has given us a life message and mine's like totally intimacy and, you know, hearing from God and, you know, we could all share our, our messages that God has given us. But I just, I feel like as we, kind of go or in Pentecost but as we come out of Pentecost I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to suddenly have this freedom of like no this is my message and I'm not going to change my message Mm -hmm. like this is the deposit that the father has given me and I'm not going to apologize for it anymore you know and so just as you guys have been speaking I've just I'm constantly coming back to this picture of of people with muzzles and the Lord's just removing it and going no 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 you have permission (laughs) to to speak you know, yes. and, and how much do we need the church right now to be arising more than ever and being voices of hope and truth so, yep. you know, and preaching the gospel? Yep. I think I think we need leaders to release our people to speak to, Lana, mm. and that's part of the responsibility that's on the leadership of churches. And like so many people go, that's too scary, Matt. Mm. Okay, mm. I've got a God who actually loves dealing with fear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think mm. we've got to start. Uh, stepping into that place of trusting that our God is going to show up. Yeah. And even if we do get one weird voice, yeah. is the world going to fall apart? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's, just, let's keep moving with that. Yeah. I think too, Lana, if, and again, I think this is a real message for people. There's a real quickening in hearing the voice of God that's happening at the moment. Uh, and we're watching it. 
we're watching it happen from our perspective. Like this week, I was speaking to a bunch of people in Ecuador through Zoom and, and just leading them in activation. Mm-hmm. And these are a bunch of guys who are so keen for the kingdom of God mm-hmm. and the God, God's voice. And all of a sudden, they're all in the throne room. Yeah. <laughs> they're all having encounters with Jesus. Yeah. They're all having feasts with Jesus. And they're, they're crying. And every one of them, because there's like about over 30 of these students, mm-hmm. and they all wanted to share what Jesus did. And that's in the space of just, it was a three and a half hour teaching. So it was a pretty, <laughs> I, I said to them, we normally speak for half an hour in Australia. They laughed. Yeah. <laughs> we get warmed up. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but this is what's happening worldwide. There's a quickening. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, Kev. <laughs> but there, there's such a quickening on God's voice and sight. So it's just, again, releasing over the people that are watching here just to say you guys can hear and you guys can see. And, again, just believing that the Holy Spirit is releasing. And you probably hear more than you think you know. Mm-hmm. I can say that too. It's like the Father speaks through his people all the time and sometimes through the most random ways. But, again, the Father mm-hmm. is loving to have a conversation and, we, and he just wants us to listen. So, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah let's say, um when we speak of the new wineskin, that's intimacy. Yeah. And that intimacy is going to carry our confidence mm. in who we are in him. Yeah. So that as we move into this new birthing, mm. um, we're able to stand in those places and go, I know who I am. Yeah. I know what I carry. Yeah. I know who my God is and what he has for me to do. Even if I don't know what he has for me to do, I can trust that it it will be something that he will walk with me in. Um, I've had a a picture of God being like a huge diamond. And we each carry at least one little facet of that diamond. We need all the voices to get the full picture of the diamond. Mm. and yet they're not all going to be the same because Mm. if they were it would just be one smooth diamond yeah Mm. it needs to sparkle and it needs the variety of each person's independent voice but independent because they've leaned into god leaned into the spirit and in that place People don't bring things that are dangerous and hurtful when they've leaned into the spirit. Mm. That's right. That's, That's the place where it's not open, just whoever come and speak. It's yeah. Here's how you lean into the spirit. Really here's good. how you hear God for yourself. That's so good. Now share what you're hearing. That's really good. Amen. I think, yeah, I think, I think ultimately the, a word of the, a word in love and manifesting love isn't always bowing to, um, bowing to common practice. Um, there's truth. How can I say this? Truth in love does not mean compromise. Mm-hmm. And, there are, there are a lot of leaders that compromise truth because they don't want their congregation to feel unloved and mm-hmm. i don't and ultimately if you're if if that's the place you find yourself then you're condoning the poison and i think there's there needs to be a clarification in a, a lot of people's hearts and look i think we always have to live in that place of of you know looking and clarifying but uh, clarifying what, what you're saying, how much of a compromise and how much truth can we speak in love and how much, and, and, and love always carries hope as well. Truth carries hope. Yeah. And if you're, if you're speaking truth, but it's devoid of hope, then there's, there's a bigger message that you can find in that. It's mm. good. Care. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the whole thing of, um, you know, like calling the gold out in people as well yeah you know like i look i'm not looking at is it bill johnson that says that i'm not looking at what you're not i'm looking at who or who you are 
or mm. yeah, or something like that. But not, oh no, I'm not tripping over who you're not, but I'm mm. calling out who you are. Mm. Um, yeah, and just yeah, we have to be people that are living in that place of that, you know, the mm. Father's heart that we're constantly seeing mm. one another the way He sees, mm. you know, and that brings it back to that intimacy. So the closer I get mm. to Him, the more I have His heart. So then the more I see my nation my children my spouse my brother my sister the way that the lord mm. sees yeah and not yeah. over who they're not yeah, yeah. um yeah Amen. No, i think that's really good mm. that's really good yeah. yeah um i just have one thing i will say and then you guys jump in otherwise we can pray but um i just i feel this really strongly um I feel like there's going to be many of you that are going to um, have encounters with the Lord. And I'm saying this because I want to encourage you to be in a position of expectation. But I've had this really strong, weighty feeling in my spirit the past couple of days as I was sitting with the Lord. And he said to me, Lana, I'm looking for those that I can release uh, my heart to for new areas, new people and new places and new nations. And it was this invitation from the Lord, like, okay, so let's say for me, I have an incredible heart for my nation and I have an incredible heart for the United States and for the nations. But the sense was the Lord was saying, there's a fresh impartation of my heart for something that you didn't expect, something you haven't previously carried. And I wanted... Um, to really encourage those of you watching to be positioned in asking the Lord, um, God, there's something new that you have for me right now that you would release it to me. God, I, I want that impartation because I've even felt in the past couple of days like there's a stirring within me for something that I haven't felt before. And I feel like that's part of this birthing that is happening. Not, It's not that God's going to take away the heart that you've had for other things. He wants to add more. Um, yeah. But there's just this, yeah, it was like his eyes were roaming and he was looking. Mm. He's like, who's who wants it? Like, who's willing? Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. anyway. That's okay. good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, mind, do you mind, can I jump in? Is that right? Of course, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, anyone else? <laughs> that, that was rhetorical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know you always say that. I know. <laughs> uh, that two things. I had a, uh, there's a vision that I feel like I'm carrying that there's people who are listening to this saying, I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And they feel like there's missing pieces. And I just want to say to you, the Father has. Uh, mm -hmm. giving you every spiritual blessing in the, the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of those pieces may be hidden, um, but again, God doesn't hide those things uh, to frustrate us. Mm -hmm. He hides us those things for us to discover. I think that's another Bill Johnson yeah. phrase as well. And um, it's that place that the Father is drawing you to a place of discovery, just like Lana is saying as well. And the other thing, and I kind of dropped this in on my own uh, church today, is here in Australia, we get quite familiar with water restrictions and we um, it's because we're so often in drought. Mm -hmm. But it really occurred to me that often in the kingdom of God, we live as if we're in water restrictions and we're not in overflow. Mm -hmm. And I think at times and in these moments like this, mm -hmm. we have to know that overflow is actually the design of the kingdom. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, We are not designed to uh, for the drips mm -hmm. or even the... The crumbs that fall from the table we are called to feasting mm. uh, and again i just think that this is a season uh, where um, we are called into that place of overflow overflow to know it to speak it to prophesy it as well i think that's for, for something for us to be doing too because again there's such power in our words and again to speak it over churches to speak it over communities that his love his spirit will manifest Mm. over uh, our, our families, our marriages, our children, our communities, our businesses, our churches, whatever that is, it's is, we've got to prophesy that and speak that. Yeah, so mm. that's kind of what I've got for tonight. That's, that's yeah. so good. And uh, crumb, again, crumbs of the table, that's a very significant thing because the you know, let's look at the story of the Canaanite woman who came to Jesus. She, her, her best faith was grabbing the crumbs of the table. Mm. So the best faith, that she could hope for was the crumbs of the table, then what should the the one that is living in that blessing 
mm. hope to receive on a daily basis. Um, daily basis. Mm. If, if we are scavenging in the crumbs of the table, then we have yet to step into something that is already ours. Mm. Yeah, we've we've forfeited something mm. so that we could live in that compromise. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think. Mm. Um, just as Moses handed over to Joshua so that Joshua could lead mm. the people into the promise and they all had to go in and they all had to choose to live in the promise. They all had to um, possess it mm. and make it theirs. Yes. Um, I think that's what we're doing right now. We're mm. stepping into the promise with being filled to overflow with the Holy Spirit mm. in such a way that we have to be active in this. Mm. We have to individually take up our role in this. Yeah. We can't just go along for the flow and think that some leader is going to get us through. That's right. Right. This yeah. is the harvest. Mm. Every worker is needed. We mm. need to step up and allow the spirit to fill us, mm. to overflow so that he can fill the next one. So good. Yeah. So, awesome. good. so, so good. Mm. Well, well, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was fun. Um, well, if anyone has anything, doesn't have anything else to share, we could pray. Who oh. wants to pray? <laughs> do you know when I was in Bible college, if you weren't the first one that said, I'll do it, you get like extra lines. <laughs> 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 you actually had to be. <laughs> one of my lecturers was very intentional. Yeah. On, uh, yeah, having people be having us be the ones that go, I'll pray. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to bow to superior as a to superior to seniority. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'll pray for Kev right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I'm just going to rub this arm already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit sore later on. Uh, anyway, <laughs> does that mean I've just volunteered? Does it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we all pray. All right. Yeah, yeah let's all pray. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you have established, mm -hmm. and Lord, we thank you for every new dimension we see of that, every new aspect of it. Lord, we thank you for every new revelation that you carry, every new way. Um, every new truth that we find in your word. Lord, we pray that we'll continue to be good stewards of this, Lord Jesus, that we'll continue to take every opportunity to spend in your presence, that we'll continue to, to seek you out above our own wisdom and to counsel. And we, Lord, pray that we'll continue to be steadfast in your love, May that me manifest that deeper and deeper and more and more each day. Bless you, Jesus. Yeah, I just have a real sense that there's a uh, there's a bunch of people watching that aren't well, as physically aren't well, and I, I want to pray life, healing, and creation into the cells of your bodies. Mm -hmm. Just that the sickness that's there, and maybe there are people with COVID nineteen, uh, but the sickness that is there. Today, that will be exposed to the light and the love of Christ. Mm. And Father, we ask that you'll come and pour healing mm. over infection, pour healing uh, over cancer, mm. uh, pour healing over uh, just aches and pains of people's bodies. And, Father, I pray that as the Spirit comes, your presence will land. And, Father, that people will see you. Mm. They'll mm. feel you, they'll see you, and they'll hear you. So, Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for this time of Pentecost, and I thank you for every believer around the planet that's gathering to pray this into being. And, Father, it's such a chorus of, of voices united uh, in the kingdom to see your spirit released. So, Father, tonight we just want to join our voices together and believe for the power of the Holy Spirit to come and restore, heal, rebuild, and renew. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we love you. And God, we thank you for the privilege, Lord, that it is to be invited into knowing you, knowing your heart and hearing your voice. Lord, I pray for every person watching. Lord, I pray 
that you would take them deeper in encounter with you and revelation of your word. God, like it says in Luke 24 when the disciples said, didn't our hearts burn with the flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? Mm -hmm. He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. Lord, I pray that you, Holy Spirit, would would really just meet people in this hour, Lord, that Mm -hmm. they would go deeper into that place of profound revelation, Lord God, of your word Mm -hmm. and what you're saying, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray specifically for people that feel like they have, um, they've really been struggling with um, with sight, with seeing what you're you're doing, Lord God, and seeing what you're saying, Lord, and hearing what you're saying. Lord, I pray for a, a complete restoration of supernatural sight, Lord God. I pray that you would increase their vision, Lord God, so that they can um, be even more sensitive, Lord God, to what you are doing and what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Lord, I pray that uh, your presence, Lord God, and the fire of your spirit would continue, Lord, to work within their hearts and concrete, Lord God, the revelation and the convictions, Lord, that you have given them. Father, I pray that by your love, Lord Jesus, that you would just melt away those those muzzles that have been over mouths. Mm. Lord, that you would rise um, that that fire and that boldness within people, Lord God, to begin to speak the truth of your word, Lord, to speak your love, your hope, your peace. Lord, and I just pray that um, where messages have been bound, Lord, where life messages that you have given people, Lord, mm. burdens for justice, Lord God, and and um, and for healing and for hope, whatever area it is, Lord, where those things have been locked down in some people's lives, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would go to the root, Lord, that you would heal it and that you would release their sound. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I just see people rising up all across the world, opening their mouths and the sound of your heart being released in different ways. And it is this beautiful symphony, this beautiful sound of the revelation of King Jesus and the good news of the gospel. Lord, we bless you. We praise you and we thank you for what you're doing. And I pray, Lord God, that this Pentecost time, would be a marker time in everybody's life, Lord God, because they have seen you in a deeper way. Lord, they've encountered you in a deeper way. Lord, they've seen your majesty and your beauty in a deeper way. We bless you, Lord, and we love you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you. I always say... If there's anybody that wants to follow along with you guys, how can they do it? <laughs> yep, well, predominantly is through our church's uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube uh, site. So it's Haberfield, H A B E R F I E L D, Baptist Church. You can find us here in Sydney, Australia. And uh, yep, all of our teachings are up there and all the things that we're doing. So feel free to like us or send us an email, shoot us a message. Awesome. Well, guys, if you like, I always say this: if you don't already, <laughs> please yeah. follow along with you guys with these guys, because as you can see, just the heart of God that they both carry and the revelation that they're releasing is just stunning. So Amen. be sure to do that. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Kev. Yeah. I love Thank you guys. You. Yeah. yeah. Thank Anything you. Else you want to say? Thank you for coming and joining us in this chat. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well. Thank you. Have a good day, evening, wherever you are in the earth. We send you lots of love and uh, we will see you again soon. Okay, bye. 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 Hi there, I'm Kevin Vorser and I work with Lana in this ministry. I'd like to invite you to come and check out our website, lanavorser.com. There you can find Lana's latest prophetic words, even an archive of her past words. On our media page, you'll find a collection of Lana streamed media. And if you check out our itinerary page, you can see if we're coming to speak anywhere near you. If we are, we'd love to see you there. If this video blessed you or encouraged you, we welcome you to leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more, click subscribe and the little bell button next to it so you get notification next time we post. Be blessed. Bye.